It's time for Tycoons of Small Biz, spotlighting the true backbone of the American economy, the true tycoons of business in America, the owners, founders, and CEOs of small businesses. The show's hosts, Austin Peterson and Landon Mance, are registered representatives of Lincoln Financial Advisors Corporation, a broker-dealer, member SIPC, and registered investment advisor. The views expressed by your hosts, Austin and Landon, are not necessarily the views of Lincoln Financial Advisors. Let's lean in as Austin and Landon connect with this week's Tycoons. Good afternoon, Tycoons, and welcome to today's episode of Tycoons of Small Biz. We are glad that you are here and with us. If this is the first time that you're listening to our show, let me just uh, quickly explain what we do. The show is called Tycoons of Small Biz because we believe that truly there are many tycoons of small business throughout this country, and we believe strongly that the small business owner in this country is truly the backbone of the economy. And that's why my partner and co-host Landon Mance and I have decided to launch this podcast a little over a year ago. I believe today is episode 60, so if this is your first time listening, we welcome you. We are excited to have on the show with us today Matt and Tina Robledo respectively president and CEO of Ultimate Healing and Cooling out of Denver, Colorado. Matt and Tina, welcome to the show. Thank you. Hello. Glad Thank to be you. here. Yeah, we're excited to uh, have you guys on the show and tell your story. Landon's had the opportunity to meet you guys before and spend a little bit of time with you, but I haven't. And so I'm excited to learn a little bit more about you. But uh, we typically start by having our guests tell a little bit about themselves personally first. So, you know, prior to the show, you mentioned that there are eight grandchildren at your house right now. So I know you guys have a fairly large family. Start at the beginning. Tell us a little bit about yourselves, where you, where each of you grew up, how you guys met each other, and, and kind of how Ultimate Heating and Cooling and, and the other companies got their start. Let me start. Yeah, go ahead. All right. Well, I'm originally from uh, Texas, West Lico, Texas, down south. Was born there, raised. Actually, my first language is Spanish. And so um, I'm bilingual. Uh, we moved up here. Basically, my siblings and my parents moved up here in the 80s. Uh, there was just no work down there and came up to Colorado. My mom had a friend in, uh, in Brighton, Colorado, give us the opportunity to stay with them and try to find work. We kind of started there. Parents found some work. We ended up going to uh, school and everything. After that, I um, was in high school, decided to go to college for a year, was going to try to go into the medical field, become a radiologist. But at that same time, I uh, got involved in the industry of HRAC world. And so I was working, going to school part time. And uh, just started making more money, enjoyed what I was doing. So I put school aside for for a little while and uh, just kept on pursuing uh, what I was doing. And, uh, you know, years later, um, Lloyd, who's uh, my business partner, is, he's the vice president, uh, which is Tina's brother. <laughs> you know, and he uh, we kind of both got in the same in the business and. Uh, me and Tina met, uh, we knew each other and, and we kind of, you know, met, I was already in the business. We met together and, uh, we got married and have four beautiful daughters. Me and Lloyd kind of started on our own. You know, we, it was just me and him. And after a few years, uh, we were able to get Tina and Carrie, which is Lloyd's wife to help us. Cause we were basically couldn't hang anymore. We just, you know, got phones are ringing off the hook. We're out there doing the work. Uh, we had a couple of people helping us, um, a couple of employees. Uh, but then as soon as Carrie and Tina came in, the world changed. <laughs> they uh, really took it over, managed the office, the financial part of it. Uh, it's just me and Lloyd's duty to make sure we get the work and get it done. And uh, we um, uh, been kind of grown as a company. Uh, we've uh, me and Lloyd kind of became business partners uh, about 16 years ago now, and um, it was just me and him. Now we're up to 40 employees uh, with the fleet of trucks. Uh, we're one of the probably one of the top five or better mm-hmm. companies in Denver, Colorado. We uh, we uh, we're a carrier dealer. 
it's a very no well known brand out there. We 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 believe in it. It's what we've been installing for us, you know, twenty years. I've been doing this for twenty two years, and so um, so that's kind of a little bit about what we do and where we came from. But we started with nothing and and moved our way up. And Tina and Carrie kind of helped helped um, with with everything that that we couldn't handle. Yes, gotcha. Carrie and I came from a corporate background. Um, I was in the financial industry. Carrie came from, um, she traveled nurses all over the 50 states, which I loved her job. It was actually really amazing. But when you bring in the corporate, we, you know, we're structured in a box. These guys were just a handshake and, a, you know, we'll get it done. We were like, whoa. <laughs> um, when we started seeing, um, I'm a Colorado native too. And I was rule number three for my brother's friends. Clearly, rule breaker over here didn't follow that rule, by the way. <laughs> when Matt and I met, it was more like um, meeting one of my brother's friends, which I just was like, oh, you guys are young. But Matt had drive. So I recognized something in Matt that I, I was as a potential husband was like, you know, we'll go somewhere. We can do this stuff together. So we've always, um, even with the four girls, all the grandkids, our son-in-laws, it's where are we going? How are we getting there? There's always been a plan. There's always been a route of attack and failure to us is let's try again. Failure is just a lesson. So being told no, that's a challenge for me. I'm like, what did you just say? Oh, we can get this done. There's no no's in my world. And I I teach our daughters the same thing. So I think that's pretty, one of our top rules is failure is fine. Everything is like a pencil to me. You can erase and start again. And we just keep moving forward. But our family life is so involved <laughs> with our companies that it's it's kind of fun, but it's it's being creative and, and moving forward. With ultimate heating and cooling, um, when Carrie and I gave up our positions with our companies then, it was a struggle because you know, getting everything started, there was no invoicing, there was no anything. And it it took a hot second to get all of us on the same page and moving correctly um, forward together or in the same book. I used to say, you know, we weren't, we're all in reading different books. We're all not on the same page. Let's get in the same book. Um, but now I think we handed out a few of Who Moved My Cheese and some other, you know, paperbacks that were quite helpful to all of us. So it, it really does help our communication within the companies. And we all run a different part of it, which I think is vital <laughs> to yeah. keep all of us together. Matt runs a construction portion of our company and I run the service side. Matt and Lloyd run the construction side of the company. I run the service side and Carrie now does all of our financials and marketing and stuff. Um, so it, it works well together. Um, for our other companies, um, Ultimate Kitchen Hoods, um, which is not tied to ultimate heating and cooling, but definitely helped us get there. Um, it's it's been about a year now we started that company and it's doing quite well. Um, Matt's still in the field with that one. Um, we do have a couple employees, but that one's growing and it's we're kind of excited about that. We're just starting marketing. We're just getting some funds going. So I'm, I'm really excited about that. Our other company is an investment company, um, which we do own uh, multiple rental properties. Um, that's my favorite. I love that. <laughs> um, if I could just focus on buying properties and flipping them and fixing them or renting them, that's where I would like to be permanently. Um, but Matt just keeps me pulled into that heating and air conditioning company. <laughs> Won't let me leave. So, yeah, no, we 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 finally, um, you know, the the ultimate kitchen hoods. I, I kind of started that business, like Tina said a little while back. It's kind of in the same industry. I'm licensed to do it. There's a niche there. We work with a lot of homeowners. We work with a lot of construction builders and they just need that one person because typically an appliance company will do it. But if you buy a a hood online or something, they want to install it for you. They don't want nothing to do with it. And so um, I offer that service. And uh, so it's, it's kind of weird because it's like, starting all over. But the good thing is I'm reaching out to my clientele that I have now and they're using me. So it's not like literally when we first started Ultimate Heating and Cooling Guys, I had opened up a phone book and called every contractor in Denver, Colorado, asking if they needed an HVAC company. If they needed help, I called everybody. That's how we started. I mean, literally, I was opening up a phone book and just calling people, uh, stopping at job sites, leaving a card. Now, it just 
falls in our lap. Now we've got such a great reputation that we don't really look for work. I mean, yes, we have a website. Yes, we actually launched a, a commercial campaign this year. Uh, it's just really just getting our name out there, knowing that we're there. And and uh, so that's kind of helped. But literally construction work uh, just falls in our lap. I've actually had to say no multiple times. It, it's just Labor, you know, trying to find labor and help nowadays is so difficult. I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that can tell you the same. Um, you know, we're we're it's a trade what we do, and, and unfortunately, electricians, plumbers, HVAC company, uh, we're having to train people from the bottom up. It's just um, there's nobody out there that are doing it anymore, and so we're reaching out to kids that graduate from high school or or people that just want to learn a trade and we're willing to train them. We're willing to show them the ropes and, and let them know that this job, you can go anywhere and get the job, you know, uh, that it's, it's a high demand and, and everything else. So I prefer to train them with no, we send them to school. We do all that. They have the technical background, but it's still different than hands-on. I prefer to hire that way. Um, so to me, they're going to learn my habits, what we put forth, our values, our morals when you're out in the field. Our industry is, is commission-based for a lot of our technicians and stuff like that. You want them earning a great salary for their families, but you always want them doing the right thing. So to me, it's vital that we don't ever acquire somebody else's bad habits or something else that they learned. I love that we start them from you know start to finish. And these we have some gentlemen that have been with us their entire career and they're amazing guys, but they, you know, ongoing education to me is huge. I pay for it. I believe it's vital and I give them the time to, to do it. We've actually flown a couple people different places um, when the, the classes aren't available here in Denver. Um, our energy department, we're one of the only HVAC companies that have um, an in-house design um, team, which that's huge. We're responsible for how your home heats and cools. I'd rather it be our design and not somebody else's. That's vital. But that that took a little bit of time to get that going too. But once again, this is someone that we worked with. We trained them. We we set forth, you know, how we want it to go. And I think that's vital for a family owned and operated company. When I say that, I'm not just one of those people that I acquired this from my dad. And now it's just family owned because that's how it was. This is truly, I uh, have my daughters in the office today. Our niece has worked with us for years. Um, so it's usually people make jokes because they're like, oh, watch who you're talking to. You never know. It's They're probably related. Um, my brother-in-law runs our front office. I mean, it just is definitely family owned and operated, which is something that we're extremely proud of. Um, and with those morals and values. And I like, like that we start them from start to finish. And now they have careers. It was something that I had just had one of the technicians come to me the other day and he was like, Tina, I'm really interested in doing this. What do you think? I think it could be a value. I did a little research and he's absolutely correct. So we're also one of those companies that if you bring us something, I'm going to listen. I want to hear what you have to say. I, I want to make this a great place for not only our employees and the families we work with out in the field, our homeowners, but the company as well. Because if Ultimate thrives, they thrive, we all thrive. So it's it's really awesome that we have, you know, um, open ears is what I call it, and and the ability to to help them reach success because that makes us successful. So I I like when they come with nothing, nothing. <laughs> Starting from scratch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I think that can actually be a big advantage in a lot of ways. So the the very first guest that we had on our podcast happens to be a client of mine, uh, and they're based in in Phoenix, but they've got locations in Texas and Chicago and a few other places now. But they do restaurant equipment installation and repair. But one of their owners, Josh Zolan, wrote a book that I think you guys would enjoy. Uh, and that you may have a reason to share with your with your employees. It's called Blue is the New White. And I would even actually potentially start to to look out look at ways to get involved with the high schools in your area because the whole mission of this book is to let kids know that college isn't the only way to go out and make a good living in this world, right? Now, for some people, it's the right way to go. For some, for some careers, you just have to have it, right? I mean, we we don't want a doctor that didn't go to that didn't go to medical school, right? So there there are those things that that do have to happen, but there are plenty of truly great careers out there, options to make a good living and take care of your family 
without having to go to college. And you can do it through a technical school. You can do it through apprenticeship programs, through your guys' types of organizations. And there's just, there's another path. And I think that kids need to know that because I think the high schools are, are just pushing everybody to college and it's just not the right decision for everybody. It's not. We actually have a niece um, and she has a knack for baking. She is, she's actually, I'm, I'm impressed. She's on Facebook. She sells, she makes strawberries. She makes these cool taco things. And she's so busy. Like, she's like, I got so many orders. I don't know. And she just graduated. Like, it's impressive. And she's like, I, you know, I think I should go to college, but I don't know if I should. And she's like, you know, what do I do for money? You know, I need to keep earning. I was like, well, I will be a silent investor, but you'll have to pay me back. But you know what? I'll help you because I think this, I'm impressed. Mother's Day weekend, her numbers were phenomenal. And I was like, keep going. What happens if we get you into your own little store route? Think big. Don't think your kitchen. And so she yeah. started you know, spinning on that, you know, well, oh, what if I can do this? What if I get enough orders? And I said, let's just start setting goals. Once you hit this, we can move to this level. Once you hit this, you know, we'll just keep moving forward. But I need you to come up with those goals on your own. I'm not going to give them to you. Come up with them. I'll review you, them with you and we'll just keep moving forward. You know, I, I believe that you do not have to go to college, you know, for, especially to earn a living. That's for sure. Especially if you have a passion for it, you know. Uh, if you have a passion for what you do, and, and and I do, and my niece does, and really, it sometimes it doesn't feel like work, you know. I mean, when I was pulling 12, 14 hours a day, sometimes it was just it didn't feel that way, you know. Um, and and just I think if you're passionate about it and you like it, you'll enjoy it more, you know. And and you know, money, you know, you want to make money, but I think sometimes some people are happy if you love what you're doing, you don't need to make as much as you think you do um, if, if you're happy, you know, but I love it so much. I opened up another, heating, you know, basically another kitchen hood company and, and stuff. So, but I mean, literally my family in the background and, and Tina's as well, my mother, she was a hair salonist. She had her own business, multiple businesses. Um, my dad uh, had his own business. Like, our family literally comes from business owners, and I think it's just in our blood to be business owners and, and to run with it. The same for Tina, and I think we just know what it is. And 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 seeing my mom work her butt off and have her own business and have the ability to do things because she had her own business and had people working for her, and so I think that kind of gave us the inspiration as well. Yes, and I yeah. I do think part of us too is we definitely struggled and it truly makes us appreciate where we are. Matt and I came from very humble backgrounds um, with single moms. It definitely has a different aspect or outlook when you, you know, you're a latchkey kid. I don't even know if kids know what that is anymore. You know, like, <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't even think that's a, a, a thing anymore, but I do believe it in, for us, it, it gave us a drive inside that I never wanted to go back and live like that, you know, and not that I, I never realized I didn't have food. And sometimes I never realized how we lived. I didn't know that because my mom didn't make it feel like that. But now as I look back, I'm like, mom, she goes, you were fine. <laughs> like we made it, you know, <laughs> but that really did create a drive. And I was like, nope, I nope, that's not going to happen. My brother too. And I think that's one of the reasons why, you know, when we look at each other and we do some of the things we do now, because we are extremely blessed and some, you know, with our, with how we work and, and what's been put behind that when we're at certain places or we're doing certain things, we're like, yep, yeah, this is it. Working hard got us here. Working hard bought that, you know, that other property or working hard, you know, gives us the ability to have our daughters in gymnastics or have this or that, or do those things. It is how you work. You've got to get up and work every day. We get out of our bed. We make our bed every day together and we're out the door because that's what gets it done sitting here or just, you know, doing nothing's never going to get it done. Tina, I have a, another, I couldn't help myself. I have another book recommendation for you, but it's okay. for your, it's for your niece. Okay. The E-Myth Revisited by Michael Gerber. Um, uh, the subtitle is why most small business owners fail and what to do about it. That I, I would argue that that book changed my life. But what's super relevant to what you said about your niece is that uh, the whole premise of the book 
is based on a conversation that Michael Gerber is having with Sarah. And Sarah is a woman who owns a pie shop. And, you know, she is making, she, she started her own business because she loved making pies. But then she gets to a point where she's, she's not just making pies, right? She's, she's cleaning the equipment and she's mopping the floors and she's scheduling and she's taking orders and she's doing all this stuff. But all she really wanted to do is to, to make pies. And so he coaches her through this conversation about looking at the business differently and putting the systems and the processes in order so that your business can kind of help run itself. And you can focus a little bit more on just doing what you enjoy, which is baking pies. So you should have her read that book. It's a good one. Yes, I know. You know what? I was trying to use myself as an example. Um, I work in a very male dominated industry. Um, I am the only female on my team. Uh, This past within the last seven months, Um, I finally, we brought in somebody um, to take my place. And so I'm not working in it so much. I'm on the outside working on it. And that has been huge. Our revenue in our department now, which is bringing this gentleman on, has, it's quadrupled. And it's, I'm not going to say the gentleman didn't have faith in me, but when I said something, I really had to prove I knew what I was talking about. And it took a little bit longer for us to get there. So this gentleman has now really helped me to to make certain things happen that I I couldn't do on my own. And I was trying to explain to my niece, it's okay to ask for help. It's okay to, you know, have people help you get where you're going. I just told her the point. I'm very confident in what I do and what I'm saying. And that has gotten me so far, but I still need help. I still need other people's experience. And, you know, that's what he brought to the table and it's been huge. So yeah, I just always try to let her know keep pushing forward. But we wrote that book down. I mean, I actually wrote the other book down because I love to read. So um, <laughs> knowledge is power. Yes, and, uh, yes. Yes, so I just, is. So I think that's huge. But I think Matt and I are great examples for them now. Do our daughters kind of follow suit? Yes, they married brothers that own a plumbing company. You know, I think we definitely drive to work for yourself, build a team, um, help people out. I love our employees. You know, and I love their families and I I definitely, you know, try to make everything personal. I send birthday cards to their wives or to their children. I I do think it's huge that we still stick together. And I'm I'm proud to say that really through this last, you know, our fantastic 2020, all of our employees hung extremely strong with us, you know, and and we actually we stayed on top. We you know, and that's because they they helped us move forward. We didn't have, you know, a ton of people that just didn't come to work or, or took a different route. So I, I am proud of, of our team. I can't stress to them enough daily and buy them breakfast burritos. And I know that's just a small token or <laughs> pay for their lunch or, you know, what can I do for you guys? Because it it was huge that we kept going through 2020 in the way, you know, forward. Every month was like another milestone. We kept hitting our numbers. I was like, you guys, I, I'm, I'm proud. We're staying tough through a, a very bad situation. And this is awesome. So they're like, you guys show up here every day and you don't even have to. Yeah. <laughs> now we try to lead from, you know, example and, and we're there and, uh, you know, it's, it's been awesome now that we've hired managers and have a team that can finally, the, the machine's working on its own. We're just there kind of keeping tabs and, and, and overseeing everything and stepping in when we need to. So it's, it's been really great. Um, like Tina said earlier, uh, we encourage our guys on, on on schooling and getting better, you know, and we pay for it all. It's, I mean, what more do you want? It's like we're paying for your education. As soon as you get a certificate, as soon as you get a certificate of license or anything like that, we award them, you know, we give them more money, you know. We, we know that our, you know, our weakest link is what's going to make us, you know, strong. So if we, if we have a weak link here, uh, we're going to fall apart. And, and I want to have, you know, great employees that, that can pull us strong together. And, and so I, I just, I don't let anybody fly by without, you know, talking with them or, or educating them and letting them know if, if they mess up, it's okay. It's just a learning lesson. 
totally okay. <laughs> you know, so don't be afraid to mess up because. Well, I might go in the office and freak out for a hot second because I'm writing a check usually when there's mistakes made. So I just put, take myself out of the situation, have my moment like, oh, my God. Okay, okay, I'm going to call the homeowner. We're going to deal with this. But that's who we are, too. You know, if we do something incorrect, we're going to make it right. Um, but it's okay. Like Matt said, yeah, they, you know, they don't mind calling us and saying, okay, this is a situation. How would you like me to proceed forward? Yeah. I'm usually like, give me two seconds. <laughs> they're like, okay, Tina, sorry. <laughs> but it's, a, it's, you know, I, it's a great team. Or even when, you know, I'm asking them to do something they think is the impossible. I love watching how they come through because I think sometimes I have more faith in them than they have in themselves. And then after we get through it and I, I just look and they're like, you don't have to say it. We know. Thank you. You know, we, you, you told us we could do it. I was like, I knew you could do it. You know? And so I, there's a lot of that. I've had a couple of wives call me and say, hey, Tina, do you think it would be possible if you could come by the house? Because I have a tour <laughs> list here. <laughs> it doesn't seem to get it done, but they listen to you. And I was like, well, for one, they're paid to listen to me. That's not fair. You know, I have a tour list here. Matt does not follow. Matt does kitchen hoods. I would love one in my kitchen, but there's not one. So, you know, I just, it's, yeah. Is it, you know, it just works like that sometimes. But. Side business number five, you know, <laughs> Tina's, Tina's uh, whooping in the shape, you know, uh, toreless execution. <laughs> you know, Carrie used to do, we switched roles. I used to actually take care of all the financials and do all that and just sit back in the office. And she worked with all the guys, but she said, Tina, I can't listen to them talk to me like that. Or sometimes some of the conversations, it's construction. Uh, Tina, there's no way, like, they're, I'm going to, you know, I want to walk out of there sometimes. And it's, I don't like what they're saying. Or I don't know how to, you know, interact with them. And I, we made a decision, you know, this might be useful for us in multiple ways. We should know what each other does. So it doesn't matter if you're here, I'm here, we're doing both sides and it's, you know, we're going to cover each other's backs no matter what. We made the switch. It was a little hard at first um, because I am completely different. I am a little outspoken, um, if you can tell. So I have no problem stepping into those conversations with the gentleman and just moving forward. Like we're going to come to... Here's our issue. Okay, what's the solution? Because I don't want to hear what the problem is. I want to hear the solutions. Let's start throwing out ideas. Give me your ideas. Let's just keep going until we come with one. We actually just had a situation. Um, our maintenance program is, it's through the roof right now. And it's getting to the point where they were like, you know, how do we handle all these customers? Um, maybe we should slow down. Well, that's not in my vocabulary. <laughs> we're not turning away customers. All right, let's figure this out. One of the issues that they kept coming up with is ladders inside homes can cause damage. They were getting scared. Tina, if we're taking a 16 foot plus ladder inside of a home, what if we ding a corner? What if we do this? What if we have the customer set up their own ladders? Well, I don't like that. You're paying me for a service. I want to provide the full service. So they actually wanted to back off, which I did for a second um, with scheduling maintenance right now. And I was like, there's a solution. Come up with a solution. So in the morning meeting, because we have meetings every morning with the team, I was like, we are no longer halting scheduling. The solution comes out today. What is it? Everyone put their heads together. We found these tiny little ladders that, you know, they, they're very, very small, easy to store on the vans. And they go to 12 foot to 16 foot. No problem carrying them in the house. You carry them like a step stool. And guess what? We're full scheduling today, all of our maintenance. So you come up with the idea. And it was that simple. I was like, it was a ladder on Amazon, you guys. <laughs> that causes problems for two weeks. So I just think about giving everyone a second to like back off of the, the issue because everyone was like, we just can't do it. And no, no. What did you just say? No. And they're like, wait, no, you don't say don't. <laughs> but let's just figure it out. So we solved that today and now we're full for scheduling again. But it is involving them, I think, always too. I never just take it on myself. We are a team. We're figuring this out. You know, obviously some of the financial decisions, I'm like, okay, let me take that back to the other three owners and we're going to figure this out. But simple stuff like that, we handle as a team together and we're all happy with the outcome. Yeah, I think that that's, yeah. in my opinion, I think that's one of the biggest things that kind of help us become as one is, you know, we take everybody's opinion and, and, and as a group, as a team, it doesn't matter if it's the truck driver or my best technician in the, in, in the building, you know, we just kind of collaborate everything together and, and uh, they feel like they're part of the, the answer and the solution. And half the, half the time they do come up with it. Heck, when I hire people, 
I want to hire people smarter than me, <laughs> you know, knowledge <laughs> than me. Uh, I want the best team out there. I'm okay with that, you know, and stuff like that. So I, I think that if, if, if anybody is um, get with your team and get their opinion and, and you know, and, and maybe you don't use it every time, um, but they appreciate that. Hey, you, they, they listen to me and, and, and they, they accepted what I, what I had to say. But I think that's something that we we gather everybody's input. And if we use it, we use it and stuff. But we definitely gather everybody's input. Yeah, you make a couple of uh, really important points there. I mean, one of the points that you made is hiring people that are smarter than you. I don't care what your politics are, but Ronald Reagan is one of the best leaders that our country has ever seen, period. Right. And that was one of the best things that he did in his life was he hired people around him that were on his staff or part of his cabinet or whatever that were smarter than him. And then he listened to them. Ultimately, he has to make the decision because he was the president then, right? You guys ultimately have to make the decision because you're president and CEO of this organization. But listening to other people's opinions and helping that helping that help you formulate your opinion and how you should go forward with the deci- the final decision is a very powerful technique that a lot of business owners don't uh, incorporate into their business. Yes, bringing on, um, he's our general manager now that took my place. That was a hard pill for me to swallow for the first few weeks because it was no longer, you know, my team coming to me, they're going to him, you know, which was great. I, I wanted this, but really inside a decision he would make, I'd be like, well, I wouldn't do that. I'm not saying that a lot, but in my head, I was like, well, I wouldn't have done it that way. But it's okay. Yeah. So it, it was, he's better at this. This is what he does. You know, I'm, I'm coming up learning what I'm doing and I it just needed that. So for, that is hard, but you do need to hire people that know, you know. Yeah, he, uh, he's, he's, he's been in the industry for a long time and he has the technical, the sales. Mm-hmm. And, um, and he really is training our guys. And, and like Tina said, I mean, our sales have been out the roof. I mean, it's just, it's been amazing. And, uh, I think that our technicians, you know, seen it cause he did it and he could prove to them, you know? And, and so they, they, they've kind of, you know, started believing and, and I was saying, okay, this is doable. This, I, I, you know, uh, but we had to bring somebody in with the knowledge and the experience to show them. And, and, and we've been happy with, with this move we made, you know, months ago. Yeah, yep. it was needed. So yeah. it's, well, and, and Tina had, you know, I mean, this is, this doesn't, this may come out bad, but it's not meant that okay. like you, you had to check your ego at the door mm-hmm. because that's what gets all of us in trouble is we let our ego dictate the decisions that we make rather than realizing, you know what, he probably knows better or she knows better. Let's, let's let them do what they do best. Oh yeah. He's consistently proving that every day. And, you know, we work well together. He was, we were talking over the, the 4th of July weekend. We had a couple of calls come in and I mean, he's definitely, we're team players together. And I think that makes a difference because he had a scenario. He's like, I don't know if I'm going to handle this right customer service wise. I need to run this by you. You know, this is, this is a scenario and this is not a good scenario to be in. And, you know, so he does still work well with me. I'm like, okay, this is kind of what I think we should do. And he's like, okay, we got our plan. Let's move forward. But then he executes, he handles it, you know, and then there's, there's lots of the technical things. I think I was definitely bringing up a class of fixers without giving people all their options. I never want to judge a book by its cover, but I definitely think I was just having people fix stuff without saying, you know what, this unit's 20 years old. Would you want some estimates, you know, on replacing your equipment? It's about that time where you're spending more on repairs than, you know, if you would, if you're willing to just purchase new equipment now and you're ready for that, where he brings that. He's like, why wouldn't you give them all their options? Why are you just fixing it? Don't judge somebody by, you don't know what they want to do. You don't know how they want to spend their money. You know, why are you just thinking they just want to fix it? You know, so I think bringing him in and that type of experience with just giving people options, not forcing anything, we're not doing anything. And once the guys were like, oh, I just asked if they would be interested in some, you know, air quality things. And they, Tina, they wanted like three of them, you know, like they thought this, this, and this is a great, you know, I'm like, well, this is fantastic. That's why he's here now. I'm just a fixer. So that's, I think it, you're right. You have to check your ego. You have to let it go and let him work in the company and do all the different things. And I'm, I'm just going to stay on the outside now doing, doing different things for ultimate. So I, this is, 
it is a hard pill to swallow, though, because we are four people that are very invested in what happens on a daily basis. We do better. We make jokes now because we never four would be out of the office at one time. Um, but actually, now that Matt and Lloyd are, I used to be a golf widow. That's what I used to say, because Matt would golf whenever possible, <laughs> all weekend. Um, I don't know where he was when I was raising our daughters. Uh, he was on the golf course. Um, but they had to do it on all their little bit of spare time, you know, so they had to make choices with that. But now they're older and not all their friends want to come out and play. So they had to turn to Carrie and I. They're like, you guys want to try golf? Um, so they've been taking us golfing. And um, so the four of us have been hitting the course like on a Friday afternoon, just leaving the office. And actually, they're they're more successful when we're not there sometimes. <laughs> and I'm like, we need to get out of it. Like we need to find those, you know, let them all do their job that we're paying them to do and just butt out, you know. Yeah, it feels good when when we're when we're all completely out of there. You know, we get emails when jobs get awarded or won, and you know, we get great Google reviews or Yelp reviews and all that. It's like all right, well, we didn't have to be there. The, the, the machine is is finally moving. It, it's working. I think maybe the pressure's not on, like, oh, the owner's over there and we're just letting them do their thing. And, and I guess maybe they know that we believe that they can do it. And uh, we just, like they say, you know, not work in the business, just kind of step back and, and just guide it and make sure they're doing their own. Yeah. A quick, a quick follow-up question in regards to the to the GM you guys hired. So Matt, you said he's been in the business a while, so he clearly has the technical abilities and the knowledge and the experience. But this question is for both of you guys. How important, how important was this hire to culture to ensure that he fit into this, what seems to be a really phenomenal culture that you guys have built at, at your company? It was extremely important. And I actually been and not scouting. I don't have to do that, but I've known this person for a while. We go to these dealer meetings um, all over the 50 states for carrier. We meet all types of owners, um, other heating companies, um, all of our competitors. We're in classes together. And this gentleman, um, he he's worked for a few actually heating companies, but he's having a hard time finding a home, I think. And I don't know why. I talked to him one night. We were having a couple of cocktails um, before dinner. And really just got to know him about his wife and his daughters and, and stuff that they were doing. Um, and I actually know um, the owner of the company that he was working for really well. I actually like his sister. Their family owned and operated too. But they were butting heads. Like they just didn't have the same future in sight. He wanted to take that company somewhere. And the owner was like holding back a little bit, not letting him have some free reign, not letting him do some of the things. Um, we kind of got wind that he put in his notice at that company. And we jumped on top of it really quick. Here's a phone call. We'd like to talk to you. I know I'm sure other companies were reaching out to him. Um, so I just think we we're in the right position at the right time and the right place to find that this person had shared a lot of the same morals and values, but he needed a company that was going to let him do what he does. And yeah. here, here it is. Let's change a few things that we're doing, which was hard, but we are giving him the ability and I can't even express our, our difference. I'm just going to throw some quick, just like generic numbers out there. One month, we had a month that we typically, winter time is extremely slow. You hold on in our industry because people will freeze to death. They will not be hot. So people could care less in the winter here. They're like, oh, I haven't had heat for three years. You know, we can hold on another year. That's how it is here for the winter. So we hold on in the, in the winter time. One month might've been a $40,000 month. Horrible, horrible month. That same month with him was a $200,000 month by just allowing him to change a few of the things. And it's so crazy. It was filling out a form. Hmm. It was filling out a form, having the homeowner fill out a form. And the other company didn't do that, you know, or letting him just say, I have this idea. Can we try it? Can we stock the vans differently? You're not getting, you're not awarding these jobs because your vans aren't stocked right. If you don't have this, this, and this, you're not going to get the job. It needs to be done now. So we had to spend some money in order to give him the ability to do what he does, but he fit right in. He's, he's a same moral, same values. The guys all really liked him. Um, he works well with us. He's, I mean, it was just a great fit at the right time, but I had a little bit of background with him, you know, so, and I think that made a big difference talking to him. Yeah, he, on a few other comfortable he, levels, like not at work, not at a, this type of situation. Here we are. We're just, you know, a couple of people running a service department for different heating companies. And what are your ideas? What are my ideas? And, and just spinning it off each other. I already like that right away. People don't like to share what they do. 
But in those meetings, we're there to make everybody successful. You know, and when you hear your competitor say something they're doing, you know, you usually want to like tighten up or not say anything, but he was never like that. He likes success and he has a program he uses. And if you believe in him and that program, it works. So I think now those other companies that, you know, didn't really hold on, they're probably looking at our numbers because we go to these and everyone talks about their numbers, right? We share them. They go up on walls. Like we're proud to, you know, to stand where we stand and do what we do. And they're probably like, dang it. (laughs) You know, we should have (laughs) held on to him. Dang it. But I'm not letting go. And I already let him know that. He's like, this is probably like a marriage. One of us is not making it out of here alive. So you're here forever. And he's like, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, one of his, uh, when we came in for the interview, uh, like Tina saying, I think why he wanted to move is, you know, the owners of the company were holding him back, had a thumb on him and wouldn't let him do what he wanted to do. Even though he told them, I can grow this company by a million dollars by next year or $2 million. And uh, basically just said, hey, can you give me the keys to the car? Right. Can you give me keys to the business? He said that. That was his exact verbiage. Oh, exactly. And I was like, whew, whew, okay, so, okay, we can do this. Because that was hard. All four of us, the, the four owners, we, that was hard. Yeah. Like, okay, we're going to let him drive and let's see what happens. And it's been phenomenal. Yeah. So we, we, we gave him the keys and, and we supported him when he needed something. We gave it to him. Really didn't question it. You know, he, he, he had the experience, the knowledge on, on how to sell and, and, and what to do and how to teach the team. And so, you know, we had some doubts, but we're like, you know what? We told them we'd stand right behind them and I'm glad we did. Uh, we just told them, don't wreck the car. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> Don't wreck the car, earn your own salary, please. <laughs> you got to prove to us, you know, make your own. And so, and he's doing that, you yeah. know, full force. So it's, it's been awesome. Yeah. That's been our goal for many years. I mean, we're, our work has always been a construction, new construction background. And that's kind of where me and Lloyd came from is, is the new track homes and, and custom homes. And, but we've always wanted to move into service, uh, maintenance and, and replacements and everything. And this is where he came from, from day one. And that's all he knew. He didn't know nothing about construction. And, and so um, it took us, it, we were getting there, but it was just, a slow, slow process. And, and with him coming, it just literally went from slow to fast and, and, and everybody's been really happy. And and it's been one of our uh, good business decisions that we made. Yeah. I think there's a, there's an important aspect to maintenance contracts in your industry Mm -hmm. and that is recurring revenue. And that's a big, big deal for you guys. Yeah, no, it is. And it's, it's, it's growing. Uh, it's growing so big that we are going to have to actually have another department that just does purely maintenance. You know, we have a service department, we have a construction department, we have a mechanical design department. Now we need a maintenance department and we're getting to that point. I mean, you know, we were with always had a float of 100 to 200, you know, contracts of maintenance and we're starting to flow up into the 500s and eventually could be in the thousands and that's a whole nother business that's a whole nother division and so that's a whole nother um this is where it goes we're hitting those high schools or hitting those things this is this is someone where they can start from the ground up here this is where you're going to learn how a furnace this is the whole thing right here that department will, will help someone grow and learn and become a technician or become you know on on our construction site but that's that's that type of department and it's it's an opportunity for sure for somebody so i I'm excited. We were just getting some things going for that. And uh, yes, I, I, I love growing. I don't love the pains, but I love that I'm sitting in my home, you know, here early afternoon and I'm at home. So I, I like that, you know, this is, this is how we do it. I can work from anywhere, anytime, but giving somebody else that, you know, opportunity to do what we do is awesome. No, I'm I'm a big believer in that. I mean, what you don't even know is that right now I'm camping outside of Park City and we're recording this podcast. So that's <laughs> you know I, I'm a big believer in in that. But there's a couple things that stuck out for me, and then I know Landon's got a couple things he wants to cover here. But you know, Landon and I have been doing this for 20 years. We work almost exclusively with business owners, and some of the things that you guys are doing today that are really hard to do as business owners is the very reason that most businesses hit a certain plateau and they never go beyond it. It's even more, what's the word I'm looking for? Even more 
it's more often seen in family businesses because they don't bring somebody from outside of the family that has experience and other viewpoints and they just continue to grow it as a family. And it's, it's a good successful business, but think about it even from your guys' standpoint, you guys have the four of you that started, right? So you got the, the mm-hmm. two couples, but you guys have four kids. I don't know how many kids Lloyd and what's the other name. Carrie. Carrie. They have two. You know, Two, okay. and it's all daughters, six daughters between us. <laughs> okay. So, I mean, you go to the next generation, you got to go from four to six, and then they're having kids. You got to go from six to, like, think about how a family-owned business survives if it doesn't grow the way that you're talking about that family business growing. And so, it, you know, all these decisions you guys are making, kudos to you for doing it. It's not easy. And there are obviously other decisions that you could even make along the way to, to blow that up. But it sounds like you guys are on the right track and doing some really cool things. So it's exciting to hear. No, definitely. So I, I don't know if you guys know the statistics around family business, but uh, there's been multiple people that have done studies. And essentially, they all fall in a range very close to these numbers. About 30% of family businesses will transfer to the second generation. About 12 will transfer to the third. And about 3% will transfer to the fourth. So as you continue to move down generations, uh, it becomes more and more challenging to successfully keep the business you know, in the family. But uh, I'm actually reading a book. I'm reading a book right now called... Uh, Oh man, it's called Business is Personal, something about family businesses. And it talks all about, it talks a lot about boundaries and how, you know, you have to set those very clear documented boundaries. And that is what, you know, attributes to the success of these companies that pass from generation to generation. So I want to ask you guys about Talk to us just, you know, for, you know, we've only got about 10 minutes, but talk to us just for a minute about like, what does a day look like, you know, for each of of the two of you? And how do you guys, how have you successfully done this for all these years as a married couple and as business partners? I mean, just talk to us about that if you would. For Matt and I, um, I want to stress it's extremely important, um, our faith. So, and when we said, I do, I am not kidding when I said for life or one of us will not walk out of the house. That's, I meant that. So we are each other's strength through our faith. And that is extremely important. But our each day starts really simple. Um, I usually get up first um, because I like to take care of the kids and make all the coffee and do all that. So we have a very traditional marriage still, which is some people just think is, is crazy. But we get up, we, you know, get ready, make the bed together. I make lunches. Um, we used to ride together. We don't do that anymore. We need, we need our 10, 15 minutes apart. Um, so I send Matt out the door and then uh, he goes on his way into the office pretty early. We leave the house around six, between six and 7 a.m. I'm out by seven with the kids. We get a very early start to the day. Yeah. So he leaves right away. I get him out the door. I get the kids ready. I get myself out the door. And then at the office, we have like our little meetings. We do all that, but we proceed through the day as business partners. Every once in a while, I heat up Matt's lunch or every once in a while, he'll bring me something to drink. (laughs) But we don't interact at the office. um, Like I would say a married couple. Um, because it's not, because I don't want to take to the office where I'm upset with him because he left his socks on the floor and I have to be his maid and pick them up. You know, so we have to let that go. I can't take that to work or I'm upset with him for a decision he made in one of our other companies that doesn't belong in the office. So we're really good now. Um, it took a couple of years for us to get that route, but we don't take that stuff to the office. Now, my brother, on the other hand, um, he is my little brother. I'll be standing in my office door. Um, he gets there very early too. And he might shove me into my office, like do the you know, the elbow chat, because we still play like that, even though we're fifties, I don't know why we can't let this go. Um, so my brother makes it fun or he'll shut my office light on or off, you know, and I'm really and shut my door. So do we still interact like that with Carrie and Lloyd. Yes. Carrie happens to be my best friend too. So it's, it's kind of crazy. I know how we all do this and how we interact, but we do really well. I think if we have a situation and the four of us do not agree on it, we go to a vote. And you just have to be happy with the outcome and it's majority rules. 
I try not to bring that home, but I'd be lying if sometimes we don't come home in the evening and I, I'm a, definitely a female and I don't want to let it go. I'm like, I need to know why you're making that decision. Explain it to me. And we try to talk through it or we'll try to do something. But most of the time when we come home or in the door, now we're just Matt and Tina, husband and wife, and we're just, you know, on to other things. Um, and we definitely have cocktail Wednesdays. That's how we make it through the week. We wait till Wednesday <laughs> and we have a couple cocktails and we're like, okay, are we all better now? All this that happened, you know, and we're looking forward to the, you know, the rest of the week, Thursday and Friday. And then, you know, it's on to the sports, but it is difficult. And we just have had to learn that things happen. We can't control every situation. Matt's going to make decisions that I do not like. I'm going to make decisions Matt does not like, but together we know that we're doing something amazing and we're going to keep moving forward. But I do push Matt. Matt is amazing. I love that he's bilingual. I wish we've actually, we've done our children no favors. My children are the only children in the entire family that are not bilingual. That is so wrong of us. It is wrong of Matt. Um, So, you know, we, we should have done things a little bit different there, but we definitely stay on the same page. And we just refocus. I think it's important. We just keep bringing ourselves back to why we're together, um, why we we are better together than you know than we are ever apart. So I'll keep them around too. And the other thing with that is, it's too hard to retrain. Once you've been married this long, you're just kind of used to each other, and you just got to roll through the punches. <laughs> he doesn't yeah. like it when I tease like that, but yeah. I, I think it's kind of funny. Yeah, like Tina said, we, you know, at the end of the day, we're both striving for the same mm-hmm. thing. We're both striving for success to better our lives. And uh, she has her own office. I have my own office. We cross paths at times. We'll help each other with our lunches. But she she deals with a whole nother department in the business. I deal with a whole nother department. I got my own set of problems. She's got her own set of problems. If she's got a question, she'll she'll ring my phone at the office or, or whatever. We, we kind of bounce things off of each other. But uh, again, we, we know that even though if I don't like her decision, it's a decision that she made because um, she wants, you know, we want to better ourselves and it's probably for a good reason. So uh, that's been one thing that we just said, Hey, you know what? I know you're, you're going to make a call and you're making it for a reason. And I know you're not going to like, you know, hurt us in any way. So do it, do it. You know, you don't need to ask me and, and, and I don't need to always ask you. And, and that at the end of the day, we just, you know, going to work, do with our own projects, um, come home. And, and really, we don't really even talk about work. We, we have our kids in sports. We just go into our lifestyle now. You know, we um, me and my daughter in Taekwondo, my 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 mother daughter's in gymnastics. We actually split up ways during the week sometimes and do our own thing and and just deal with family. And uh, like Tina said, once in a while business comes up, but we talk about it and and we're like, ah, we'll talk about it at work tomorrow. <laughs> so. Yeah. So Matt just made a decision that I wasn't too happy about. <laughs> We had one of our properties um, that we just had purchased. There's been some issues at that property and we have a fridge that just keeps going out. Well, Matt just keeps fixing this fridge. I'm like, we've already bought a new fridge. You're like, you've already paid for a new fridge, put a new fridge. So I had actually, if I would have got the phone call, I'd been like, replace the fridge. Matt chose to fix the fridge. Well, guess what? Now we're purchasing because the fridge broke again. So see, so now I'm not going to let that go all night. I'm going to open the fridge. I'm going to, there's going to be some jokes. We might deal with that for a while because I'm like, why would you do that? But you know, you, it's just one of those decisions Matt made. And he doesn't Probably a good thing tomorrow's Wednesday, huh, Matt? Yeah. Oh, we're probably, we were actually talking about it. We're trying to make creative cocktails now. Like he'll purchase some stuff and he's like, makes his own creative cocktail and we give him great names. And that gets our mind thinking other ways too. Right. So he's like, ah, oh, so we, we have some different cocktails, you know, boating is our favorite thing. We live on the lake. Well, I wish we lived on the lake. In the summertime, we go to the lake a lot. And so we're, you know, thinking of our new lake drinks. So we have lake water, which was actually really good. I was actually impressed with that one. But, you know, so we we just do different things to to get our mind off of work. But that fridge, I'm not going to let go tonight. I'm going to tell you that right now. That's going to haunt Matt today. Well, I, I don't know if Austin and I have ever formally recommended a book on our podcast. And here I am now recommending the third, but just so you know, <laughs> in the company of family, how to thrive when business is personal. That's the book that I was just referring to. I'm about halfway through it and uh, some great points. It's written by Melissa Mitchell uh, Blitch. 
So anyway, check it out. Guys, we've got three minutes left. So I'm going to serve the ball over to you. And you guys can either talk about one or two things. Just talk to us about what the future looks like for, for you guys and for your companies. Or if you'd prefer, talk to us a little bit about um, your experience in real estate investing. I know that's something that's that's pretty important to you guys. You're pretty passionate about that, mm-hmm. Tina. So I'll give you those two options. Talk about either one of those. And then uh, we'll wrap up here in just a couple of minutes. I think, yeah, the real estate, I just don't let fear drive some of my decisions. Um, if you're asking if I purchased a property in this last six, seven months, absolutely not. <laughs> I'm not interested in purchasing a property right now, but I am waiting here because <laughs> I, I think that the market is going to do what I needed to do for an investing aspect. And I'm going to jump on some, some opportunities. I definitely follow a few things. Um, I definitely like to use other people's money. I try not to use my own and use you know, for investing purposes, I think it makes sense. I actually have a couple of properties right now that um, are Airbnb and it's, I don't know what happened in 2020, but they're killing it right now. So that to me is, is just not just renting it, you know, for the 12 months, you know, the um, Airbnbs listing and all those different sites. It's crazy right now, people that are, are actually traveling. And I think that's a very, I'm looking at a few more of those types of properties, but I'm going to wait a little bit. I'm getting offers on a couple of my properties right now and they're not for sale. I think that's insane. People are doing that and they're offering me crazy money. So I'm just holding on. Actually trying to talk Matt into letting one go because why not get a hundred thousand more than what it's worth and then turn around and invest that money in a couple other properties when the time is right. So I, I think it's just being really smart with the property you're buying. Um, have we been successful every time with that? No. Have I bought some that he's like, don't look at the outside. <laughs> Have some vision. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. I I can see, you know, outside of the box, but have we got ourselves into some that were inside, you know, we're doing some stuff that I'm like, Matt, but now are we killing it on those? Yes. Yeah. So I now learn we do not let fear drive some of those decisions that we're making. Sometimes those ones that you pick up in other states, do we purchase real estate in Colorado? The answer is no. Um, we definitely go to other states and we purchase you know, where we can get five times for our money. Yeah. It's just, it's something that, uh, you know, it's been a few years now and it's kind of our retirement per se, or part of our, a portion of, of what we plan to do aside. Uh, Ultimate has been, you know, given us enough money to, to accomplish that. And, and we really love the real estate, especially me being in construction, my whole background, basically my adult life. I'm not scared about these houses. I know how they're built and, and, uh, and we just kind of flow with the market the way it is. We always have our eyes on, even if we're not buying, we're shopping, we're looking, we're looking at what the market's doing. And, uh, and yeah, like Tina said, we, we don't buy here in Colorado. One, you just can't afford here in Colorado. <laughs> not for what we buy, not for what we do. Yeah. And, that's great. and so we just kind of go other places and, and, uh, but that's kind of what we're, we're, we're trying to grow that. Um, that's something that's definitely going to be passed down to the kids. And, and we got a lot of things going on there, but it's, it's, it's just different from the HVAC world. Uh, we're in real estate and, and we love it. And just, uh, we, we plan to do a lot more here in the future. Yeah. Just don't let fear drive your decisions. Don't be afraid. If we were afraid, I would still be working for that financial institution. Matt would still be working for another company and we wouldn't be able to do what we're doing right now. We wouldn't say we own three companies. We wouldn't have the things we have. We stopped being afraid. That's what it was. Broke, broke the golden cup. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure you heard of that. <laughs> it, it was tough. We, we had to break those and we broke them and never turned back. Well, that's awesome. I I know Landon usually closes out the show, but I just wanted to make sure I got this comment. And I I really appreciate what you guys are doing specifically for the six daughters that you have between the two couples. You know, Landon and I are both parents of daughters. We both have sons as well. And so, you know, we, we see both sides, but teaching a daughter to grow up and to be strong in this world and that it's okay to be a a leader and a business owner in this Mm -hmm. world, I think is extremely important today. So hats off to you for that. Thank you. It's important to us that they're independent. Well, uh, we sure appreciate you guys uh, a couple of minutes over. So we'll, we'll kind of wrap up. But if anybody wants to track you guys down and, and, you know, have a conversation with you or they want to check out your website or what's the best way for people to, to get out there and connect with you guys? 
um, ultimateheatingandcooling.com, ultimatekitchenhoods.com. Um, those are great ways to search us on the internet. You can definitely find us there. We're on Facebook as well. You know, what's great about us too is, you know, call. We're, we're good to give advice. You know, it doesn't, we don't charge sometimes people for advice. We know that it comes around. So, you know, we like to guide people and, and help them with any problems they may have. But again, Facebook, um, our website, Tina mentioned, we're in Indeed as well. So uh, we have a company profile there, Ultimate Heating and Cooling uh, is where you can hunt us down. Awesome. Well, again, guys, that was a really, really phenomenal conversation. And uh, we very much look forward to uh, following your guys' continued success. So uh, don't be surprised if we reach back out in six or 12 or 18 months and get you guys back on here for another follow-up. Maybe another company by then because he has one in the works. So you never know. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, guys. Uh, thanks well, again for joining us. It. Thank you for having us. You've been listening to Tycoons of Small Biz, proudly hosted by Austin Peterson and Landon Mance. Austin and Landon are comprehensive financial planning professionals specializing in financial, estate, and succession planning for small business owners. Austin and Landon have offices in Scottsdale, Arizona, and Las Vegas, Nevada, and represent clients in 14 states throughout the country. Join Austin, Landon, and the Featured Tycoons live every Tuesday at 1 p.m. right here on Business Radio X and your favorite 